St. Paul. I actually had an hour break between my morning committees and my afternoon committee and session, and so uh, stopped out for a lunch at one of uh, St. Paul's nicest uh, restaurants here on Selby. This week, uh, things should be moving quite quickly as it's deadlines, and so I, I guess in some respects, uh, both Health and Human Service and K-12 committees have run into the evenings, though I will say um, the bills have been non-controversial and uh, rather small, and it's, it's a bit surprising. I would have expected a little more uh, frenzy uh, here at the Capitol, as uh, this is the time all bills have to have their, their first reading in either the House or the Senate. And perhaps the Senate's worked a little faster and some of the bills are being heard over there, and we'll see those next week. Uh, but right now, I, I'm a little surprised at the slow pace. Every day this week, we've had some sort of floor session, but the sessions have only lasted about 10 minutes to 30 minutes, and no major bills have been heard. I am anticipating hearing a bill or two this evening, but again, our uh, K-12 policy committee is scheduled to be heard, to uh, have a hearing this evening, and so I'm guessing we won't be on the floor too late again this week. So, rather surprising pace and a little unusual, but I'm sure that will change in the weeks ahead. A couple things that might be of interest, uh, the nurse licensing compact uh, bill, which I carried last year and is moving again this year, has finished its way through the Senate. I have yet to have a hearing this year, though I had my hearings last year, and uh, anticipate perhaps a hearing in the coming week or two to see if we can't move that bill ahead for Mayo Clinic uh, and many of the nurses here uh, in Rochester and across the state who are in support of the compact. As most of you know, Rochester now has over 100,000 citizens and so it has been bumped up into that classification as a city of the first class. And what that means is that there are some limitations at the school district and in other governmental bodies that have become problematic. And so we are quickly trying to put some legislation in place that will protect our school district from being out of compliance due to this change in law. So you'll probably be seeing some action uh, in the House and the Senate and hopefully resolution before the session ends. Next week, I have one of my bills up in health care reform uh, um, committee, actually, that I got to chair last night for uh, about 25 minutes, and we had two bills heard. That was kind of a fun opportunity. I haven't had the chance to have a gavel for a couple of years now, so that was a nice experience. And the bill that's going to be heard is one I've been working on for uh, children and adults with autism to try to expand some uh, appropriate housing opportunities for that population. So that bill will be heard on Wednesday next week in reform and hopefully will go to the House floor as I don't believe that has a fiscal note. And the Department um, of Health and Human Services have both been working very hard on a number of the issues I have uh, in dealing with the uh, disability community and autism in particular. So uh, not much going this week, um, but that will change in the weeks ahead and uh, we'll be in touch. Until next time.